Sabea Patuari Waya Sigiwanko. Hi everyone, my name is Natasha Tonte. I'm an artist from Minasa, Indonesia. Currently living and working in Yogyakarta. In this particular event, I would like to talk about the outcasted entities and non linguistic narrative. Over the last few years, myths, speculation, fear, and ritual are recurring themes in my work. I have been focusing on my artistic practice to construct a new narration as a method of speculative fiction and how they have determined our expectation for the future. Quite often, major institutions like the nation state or religious organizations fabricate what we understand as fear. Furthermore, my works mostly start from the response I have to the marginalized life, be it organic or inorganic matter around me, which is sometimes forgotten or even overlooked by humans from the notion of cockroaches and their agency to the forgotten history to the marginalized belief of Minasan stone culture. I try to raise and observe this phenomena in my work as a response to the world I live in. These practices also question the condition of the world in which currently humans are at the center of everything. Can we think outside that framework? How do we build a sustainable future for multi-species interaction? At first, I attempted to see both the agency of cockroaches and the stone that has its own non-linguistic relation to their ancestry. Both of them could be seen as living fossils. They exist before us humans and will exist until we are not here anymore.
In one occasion, I questioned the geological narration or scientific and therefore, by bringing forward to the ontological understanding of terms by Minas and people a thousand years ago. An event known as Pinawetengan Stone Pack or Perjanjian Watu Pinawetengan. A story about how humans connect with non-human entities. But as I reflected on this agreement, Based on the stone, I found that it's more about than just a human-non-human relation. The stone determines their practice of commoning land. I also wanted to research the ancestral knowledge that I have known since I was a child, but never paid that much attention to. In order to rethink my position as a diasporic Minasan. Fiction and speculation for me is a powerful method to imagining new worlds and instigating change. Through a fictional approach, I try to build my speculation from a critical overview whilst practicing world building. Once I get into my ancestral narrative, I start to question myself. How to unlearn and learn the customary belief or adapt without seeing it as an exotic subject, but more critical towards my indigenous knowledge. I found that Mina's ancestral narrative is not heteronormative or Darwinian survival of the fittest at all. This evident is how they treat the stone. At the same time, since Minas and people have also experience with colonial presence, many of their cosmological ideas are intermixed with practices of modernity. At first, Stone was conceived as a source of knowledge because it divides lands. In this way, it created a political system for Minahasans. However, during Dutch colonialism, land, along with labor, was seen as a determinant for value. Adat Minasa pada momen Himas 2020 ini kami meminta dan mendesak negara untuk segera mensahkan rancangan undang-undang masyarakat adat jika negara Republik Indonesia ingin umur panjang. In my previous research, I was observing the way of life of Minahasan, which is called Mapalus, and I speculate to imagine a new geological epoch of Mapalusin. When I was researching Mapalus, I found another interesting aspect in Minahasan life, which is the healing process of Makatana. Both Mapalus and Makatana focus on human and non-human relations. In my current research, 
I am now observing my katana. And it occurred to me that my katana gives me an alternative to think speculatively about knowledge production. As a form of ancient technology, Makatana provides knowledge in which the notion of healing is one of the important factors in the social order. Makatana resonates with the idea of caring, conviviality, and remedy. Four centuries. In the Minasa culture, technological apparatus for ritualistic purposes and healing process has been their epistemological attempt to maintain the equilibrium amongst human and non-human kin. This balance between technique, nature, and human is manifested by the series of knowledge they present when calculating and configuring the celestial objects according to physiology of humans. The bodies and the celestial objects are analogous. However, most people in the contemporary Minasan society do not believe in this kind of practice. Some of the reason is because they think it is against the morality of the Christian. In the end, most of the knowledge in Minasan society is embodied one. It is based on oral narratives and closely connected to the presence of nature. My approach to artistic practice is to understand this dynamic of Minasan landscape and how it shapes the social order of the human and non-human that inhabited that landscape. Tamber Wangko, Makapulu Sama, 
Thank you so much.